somebody sent me an essay that they had written for their master's thesis that was wildly creative and they were basically told to leave the program and, and that they couldn't continue. Not in the mean way, they, what happened was that what they were thinking was so outside of the conventions in the discipline is that no one had any idea what to do with the essay. So, and that's really the lot of creative people, right? They're always stepping outside of evaluation structures. And so it's not that surprising that the relationship between creativity and grades at the U of T is zero. We found out as well by looking at graduate student performance across multiple institutions that there was a negative correlation between creativity and graduate school performance. It wasn't even zero, it was worse than negative. Being creative was negative. And you think, well, that could make you cynical as well, but, but you, you can't be cynical in that way because one of the things that happens in science is that science tends to progress incrementally rather than in great leaps. Now and then someone comes along who blows the structure out of a science and advances it ridiculously like Einstein, but like most people aren't Einstein and maybe thank God for that. Most of the time you're in a discipline, you, you understand the discipline and then once you've developed understanding of the discipline, you know what the next micro question is that should be answered. And part of the reason that science is so powerful is because it allows people who aren't genius level creatives to make real advances in the generation of knowledge. One tiny micro step at a time. It doesn't matter if there's 100,000 people doing it and each of them is making a micro step, man. We're zipping along as fast as we possibly want to zip along. And so it turns out to be conscientiousness that's the excellent predictor of graduate student performance. That's the best predictor for law. It's the best predictor for managerial positions. It's the best predictor for administrative positions. Anything that has a structure of rules that needs to be applied, conscientiousness is a great predictor. So, but it's not good for predicting artistic ability or entrepreneurial ability. And that's also really important because one of the things, this is partly why bureaucracies stultify, right? Because what happens is they, as they develop, they get chock full of conscientious people with a few psychopaths thrown in there just for good measure. They get chock full of, of conscientious people busily zooming efficiently down a single track and then all of a sudden the landscape shifts and they're going very, very efficiently in exactly the wrong direction and then the whole bloody thing falls apart. So you need to have some creative wing nuts in your organization to come up with completely absurd ideas that might just on the off chance be true. Always remember that the reason that you initially started working was that there was something inside yourself that you felt that if you could manifest it in some way, you would understand more about yourself and how you coexist with the rest of society. And I, I think it's terribly dangerous for an artist to fulfill other people's expectations. I think they produce, they generally produce their worst work when they do that. And if, the other thing I would say is that if you feel safe in the area that you're working in, you're not working in the right area. Always go a little further into the water than you feel you're capable of being in. Go a little bit out of your depth. And when you don't feel that your feet are quite touching the bottom, you're just about in the right place to do something exciting. It all boils down to getting in a playful and relaxed frame of mind. Most of it's to do with relaxation because unless you're relaxed, you can't hear the promptings from the unconscious. You know, nobody ever had a bright idea when they were attacking a machine gun nest. <laughs> you see what I mean? If you're occupied with activity, and that's one of the reasons why there's so little creativity at the moment, is that nobody gets any peace anymore. Because these damn things are ringing all the time and beep there and you know, you, you sit down, there's another uh, email come in. It's absolutely poisonous because interruptions and anxiety will kill any kind of creativity. So you have to get in an atmosphere where you're a little bit, you've got a little cocoon of your own. You close your door or you, you go and sit in the park and you just stay quiet. And for the 20 minutes, nothing happens because you can only think of the things you ought to be doing. You know, people you've forgotten to telephone. So you have to have a little notebook and you write those down. And then after 20 minutes, the mind starts to calm down just as it does in meditation. It's almost identical process. And then when you start thinking about the subject, not too hard. You don't want to get tense. You just kind of play with the thought and you get little ideas start popping up. But if your mind is full of, mm, mm, you know, you'll never hear those little ideas. It'll be drowned out. Do you see what I mean?